an unknown tribe. It was a beautiful but blistery day in the area of January. The year was around 1700 in the place of the Midwest of America. The wind was blowing fairly hard. There was snow on top of the grass out in the open range of Indian country. The tribe that was nestled right in the middle of this was surrounded by a dense forest off in the distance. This was a tribe with no name, a tribe that would rather to be left alone. There were about 100 people in this lonely group of Indians, and they aren't the kind of Indians that anyone would want to meet. They really only had one thing in common with other tribes, and that was survival skills. The entire group had an agenda of making sure that their place in the wild would go unnoticed. Yet their loud and chaotic rituals, dances, and such could be heard for miles. The sound would carry across the plains and even through the woods. Their rituals were actually that of an evil that we people of today would call demonic. They relied exclusively on the mirror image of the Great Spirit. The individuals of this tribe <clears throat> would do this to receive strength, to train their offspring to be great warriors, warriors of the unpleasant type. These warriors have the power to tame animals, to attack their foes. However, once the adults reach a certain age, they have to take their own life. This changes relatively quick. There was a mother and father who had a daughter as she was now ready to train on to how to obtain strength and power to tame animals, which they believed was about 12 or 13 years old. One night at or around the wee hours of the morning, the mother of the young girl woke up and saw that her daughter was not in their hut or place where they lived. She jumped up and grabbed the father and they both ran outside. The father could not see his child anywhere. So he went out to the edge of the woods and stretched out his hands and called for her. The young girl came walking out of the woods holding her head down to hide her face. Father said, Where have you been? The daughter replied, I've been away in the past trying to fix some things. Father says to her, As he places his hand on her head, I can see where you have been and what you have been doing. You have been sacrificing a feline in my name. The girl replied, Only to fix the tribe. Only to fix the tribe, Father. I am full of hate, Father, but you only want me to grow in that. So my sacrifice was spiritual. The Father said to her, What about your spirit? It could have left you. The girl said, My ritual was to cast my spirit into the feline. But when you sought me out, I could not finish. The mother walks up to the girl and, and shouts, You, my daughter, are unlike any of us. And the father says to the mother, We must give her to the forest. The father and mother, and by this time the rest of the tribe, came to the young girl and gave a full-off ritual and banished her by the spirit. The tribe was dancing around and chanting. It started to lightning and rain. The young girl collapsed and then died. She was then banished into the woods. The tribe leader says, this young girl must not ever die and live with torment with the animals that she has sacrificed. She will not ever taste death. The young girl was now fully a spirit who was sobbing and full of anger while she was walking into the woods. The storm that had passed through was believed to be brought by the spirit that they called upon, and it destroyed the tribe's village and all that was in it. 
The girl was now a spirit and the only one left of her kind. As time goes by, many years passed, and one destined day, she finds herself being followed by a mountain lion. The mountain lion that was following her was walking towards her. She sees the cat and holds out her hand and sings and says a chant. She then possesses the beast and immediately the body of the cat changed form. It became bigger. Its back had arched its way up high, higher. Bones were cracking and popping. Its face became longer, almost the shape of a human. Her fur changed to the color black. She had razor sharp claws that were about six inches long and now she can stand and walk upright. Now that she is a beast-like creature, her world is really nothing but darkness. Holding on to the anger and hate that was placed into her. Because she was banished, she now absolutely must seek revenge on the human race. The creature that lives in the dark needs to feed on human souls to accomplish this. But because of the banishment into the woods, she will have to devour as much flesh of other animals to keep up her strength. She cannot leave the area of where her tribe was at or she will surely cease to exist. The only way to leave this area is if someone, a human, will summon her. And now the leader, if you will, of the darkness has to endure until then.